You're listening to KPFT Houston, 90.1 on your dial. It's 7 o'clock. It's time for Songwriter's Studio. I'm your host, Tom Tranchilla, along with my buddy, Tim Pagel. How you doing tonight, Tim? I'm, I'm doing well. Just trying to figure out whether it's going to put on a jacket or take off a jacket. Oh, my gosh. That temperature dropped in the last hour or two, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, it is our great honor to have uh, Barbara Padilla as our guest on our show tonight with a brand spanking new excellent album. Barbara, Barbara, are you with us? I am with you, yes. Well, thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be on our show tonight. Uh, you've got a, lo- a long history. There's so many things to talk about in s- so little time. We're a 30-minute show. I could easily stretch this interview out to two hours, but we just don't have it. You've got a brand new self-titled album out, Barbara Padilla, and it is excellent. I've listened to it twice, recorded with the London Symphony Orchestra, both at the Apple Studios in London and Capitol Records in Los Angeles, and what a masterpiece you put out here. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to the program. It, it is it is my privilege, and uh, well, uh, and I'm glad you like the the album. Yes, we we recorded it. Uh, we recorded three songs in in Capitol Studios in Los Angeles, and the other seven songs we recorded in Abbey Road with the London Symphony Orchestra. It, it is really a like a, a any artist's dream uh, to be able to do those things. I am very very blessed, to say the least. First of all, how did you? How were you able to uh, land the uh, the recording sessions at Apple Studio? And on top of that, probably the most world renowned uh, uh, London Symphony Orchestra to back you up. How did all that happen? Oh my gosh! Um, well, it was unexpected, really, because um, there there was there was this beautiful relationship that um that i developed with with one of uh, my dearest friends greg field who is the producer of the of the cd and uh and we we decided that we were going to record uh three songs in capital uh along with jorge calandelli who was the co-producer and one of the best best arrangers in in the world and and so the we were so pleased with them with the product, with the three songs that we sang in Capitol, that that we decided. I mean, Greg was. Uh, we were talking. We were talking on the phone, Greg and I, and then he said, "Well, why don't we? Um, why don't we decide to make a, a whole CD uh, with um, with the same classical crossover flavor that we are already that we have already started?" Um, and and he said, um, "What what do you think if we?" What would you think if, if we could go to the to to London to record in Abbey Road Studios with the London Symphony, or- Symphony Orchestra? And of course, I was like, "What are you crazy or what?" I mean, I didn't know that that was actually a possibility. And so I started talking to to people, to friends and family, and and of course investors because you always need uh, money to do that. And and it was. The, the the response was amazing, was unbelievable. It was everything was so positive, and and everybody so was so supportive. And so, thanks to Greg Field, um, the producer of these uh, of the CD, um, we we ended up in, um, in in Abbey Road Studios in London uh, with the London Symphony Orchestra. It was it was the producer of the CD that that orchestrated. The whole thing, along with the co-producer um, Jorge Calandrelli. Well, I would expect nothing less but the super high quality of this recording. This recording quality is superb, and your vocals are absolutely stellar. Uh, I've got track number four queued up first uh, uh, for a couple of reasons. Of course, this is one of uh, Andrea Buccelli's uh, signature songs, but your vocal range to hit these notes is out of this world, and I think it's probably the best cut on the record. I'm going to start with this, and we've got so much to talk about. After this song, we're going to get back and talk a little little bit about your runner-up to America's Got Talent. But right now, we're going to hear Time to Say Goodbye. This is brand new Barbara Padilla.
Barbara Padilla. Wow. <laughs> Barbara, you had Thank my co host Tim's jaw dropped over here when he heard you hitting these notes. I ran out <laughs> of breath 15 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Self titled album, Barbara Padilla. We've got so much information to talk about. I had to introduce the listening audience to that fabulous track. Just wonderful. And I think it really does. Uh, feature the range of your vocals. You're classically trained, basically mostly a classic, uh, a, an opera singer, but you've mixed it up on this and brought some more popular songs in, which I think will definitely help uh, bring it to a wider audience. Oh, of course. And uh, the beauty of this, this genre, it's, a, it's, a, it's uh, basically a new genre that's called classical crossover or popera that people are calling it opera and uh, the, the beauty is that we we opera singers are not a character of an opera anymore we are ourselves but we can use all the wrench that is required of us to sing an opera to sing more pop 
songs. It's not necessarily pop. Um, because they are songs that are written for, for a singer with, especially this one time to say goodbye is, is, is written for a sing, for an opera singer, is written for an, a singer that has that kind of range. And it is, um, it's a genre that I fell in love, um, because it allows me to reach the audience in a, in a totally different way. And, um, I, I just love it. And this is, this, this is a the perfect example of, of this new, Genre, relatively new genre that is combining the two worlds. Uh, the last opera singer we had on here, we spoke of today, Mr. David Horn, uh, came in here not only discussed the genre of opera, but also how much trouble it is anymore to bring education into the schools that introduces this type of music to the younger generation, and I think it's so necessary. Um, your thoughts on that? Well, it's a genre that has definitely, I mean, the, the, um, Mr. Horn, um, uh, David Horn, he was, we went to school together and, and I, I know him and, and he's a wonderful musician. He's a wonderful singer, first of all. And, uh, well, he, he is teaching right now and he knows how, uh, firsthand, how hard it is to introduce this genre to the, to the new generations. Um, the beauty of this is that opera has, uh, has survived um, hundreds of time, I mean, hundreds of years in, in time. And, and it, it is a genre that has proven to be um, very well accepted by, by the people once they know it because it's, it's beautiful. It combines theater. It combines sometimes dancing and, and, and music, and, and it's very expressive. And um, I think... The, the difficulty of this of this genre is because is is you have to you would have to sit for four hours and watch the the world right now is moving so fast that anybody that has four hours or five hours to to uh, give themselves to entertain themselves it's it's, a, it's um, well it, it 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 would be a very a very uh, big privilege but the the great thing about this genre that I am um, that I'm singing, uh, the, the classical crossover, is that it introduces people with the more classical sound without, without having to spend four hours sitting in front of, um, in, in, sitting in a theater or in front of a screen uh, watching a whole uh, play develop. And in every song is, every song is, is a piece of, of drama that is that that happens in four four to six minutes, and that's that's the beauty of it. It it, it is it, it's sung with the same kind of technique, and the sounds are very similar, but they are of course shorter songs, and, and you don't have to sit for four hours. And if you if you if you ever did it, I mean, if if, if people did it, they would they would learn that they are opera lovers as well because it's, it's a very fascinating world. Barbara, uh, let me read a quote here, and then we're going to move on to the next track. You were runner-up in 2009 for America's Got Talent, and all of us uh, in Houston that were familiar with you and your music were watching on the edge of our seats, and we couldn't believe that Country Boy beat you out that year. However, <laughs> I'm going to read a quote here from uh, Pierce Morgan, who was the judge at the time, said it was the greatest single vocal performance he had ever heard on America's Got Talent. I have to agree uh, my family, we were all huddled around the television set watching you right up to the end, and uh, as well as people from our church. I say us because you go to the same Prince of Peace, uh, which also plays an important role in your life. I'm going to go ahead and play the next track I've got queued up, which is track six. This is uh, another English uh, uh, sung song, You Were Made For Me, and then we're going to get back and do a little bit more chatting. Sure. Stop. 
Barbara Padilla, brand new music off her self-titled album, You Were Made For Me. What a great song. Once again, uh, soaring vocals, excellent Thank recording you. quality. Barbara, um, we were talking while the song was going on about your past. You're originally from Guadalajara, Mexico, and you majored yes. in music, and you actually received a master's degree and then went on uh, it, and went through some troubled times. Uh, do you want to let the listening audience know uh uh, what uh, kind of brought you to Houston? 
Oh, um, well, um, it's, it's a long story. I'll try to be very brief. I had a Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's a type of cancer. And I went through it for five years. And um, one of the things that I did uh, was that I came to Houston to receive a second opinion to MD Anderson, of course, and, um, and, and then went back to, to Guadalajara. But while I was here in Houston um, visiting doctors and hospitals, I, um, I also did a, an audition for the Moore School of Music in the University of Houston, and I was awarded a, um, a full scholarship to come and, and, and do the program here at the university and then the, 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 to receive my master's degree and, and all. But first I had to go back to Mexico to receive all my treatments, and then I, um, uh, then I came to Houston, and then I had a relapse once I was here already studying in the, in the music program and everything, and then I went back to, to Guadalajara, and I received a, a, a bone marrow transplant that ultimately was what saved my life, um, and then I came back, and uh, and I met my husband, uh, to, who I, to whom I, I dedicate this song, You Were Made For Me, and, and I met my husband, I, I got married, I graduated, and, um, and that's, that's how I ended up living here in Houston. Great story, and uh, then you got involved, they encouraged you to audition for America's Got Talent, and of course, we'd mentioned earlier, made it all the way to number two, runner-up. And, uh, of course, you know, just to make it that far is quite an honor, but every bit deserved. You're a fantastic singer, and the free concerts you've put on up at Prince of Peace and other places are, are very, very much appreciated. Um, we're going to play one more song here, and I'm going to try to squeeze in two, but we may not be able to make it. So what I'm going to do is uh, jump to track three, uh, To Say. Is that correct? Yeah, To Say You Are. That means you are in, it, in Italian, yes. Yeah. All right. This is sung in Italian. Again, this is off the brand new Barbara Padilla self-titled album. Tu sei per me la storia che il filo d'erba dice alla rucciata. Se il viaggio della nuvola che al vento va prima che bucci a cata. Se il sogno che non finirà quando l'aurora illumina la strada. Tu sei per me il fiore che rinascerà qualunque cosa.
Barbara Padilla, fantastic album, fantastic vo- vocals, and what a nice person. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara, thank you so much for honoring us with your uh, wonderful voice and personality today on Songwriter Studio. We you certainly wish you the greatest uh, luck on this uh, new release. It's fantastic. If uh, our listeners want to order a copy of this, where do they go? Oh, they can they can order it or they can download it from any digital store. Um, all the digital stores that are iTunes and and CD Baby, and they can order it physically. They can find it in Amazon dot com and in my website for uh, only in the United States. In my website, barbarapadilla dot com, and well, they can also follow me in my um, my social media channels that are um, YouTube and uh, Facebook and Twitter as Barbara Padiva. And, and, and they, can, they can follow me, follow me there and buy the, buy the CD in my website as well. Correct. Spelling is B-A-R-B-A-R-A, last name Padilla, P-A-D-I-L-L-A. Double L's are silent. So please go order a copy of this. This album is fantastic. Thank you so much for being our guest on Songwriter Studio. Anyway, Tim, we've got Thank a couple you. things to announce before we go out, and we're going to queue up track one. I guess we're just about out of time, so what, what's going on next week? Well, we've got a fundraiser for KPFT coming up next Sunday. Uh, it's going to be Grant Peoples uh, with uh, Yours Truly uh, or opening up uh, Mr. Uh, Tranchilla and Buddy Allen. It's uh, next Sunday, at uh, March the 1st at 3 p.m. It's up at uh, Millbend Coffee House. Uh, further information, you can go to millbend.org. That's it for us, and thank you once again, Barbara Padilla. The name of the album is self-titled, Barbara Padilla. It's a fantastic album, recorded uh, at Apple Studios and Capel Studios, along with London Symphony Orchestra. Thank you once again, Barbara, for being our guest today on Songwriter Studio. God bless you. Thank you.